Welcome to Asset Commissioning Process Descriptions, and thank you for your interest. We hope you'll take time after this short presentation to explore the other Triad Unlimited presentations on YouTube, follow us on LinkedIn, and visit our website to see all our services and training offerings. Asset commissioning is defined as the testing, validation, and turnover of an asset for operation. It consists of the processes that ensure assets are functional before they're installed, and then functional when they are installed in their operating environment, and then proven to be capable of fulfilling their design function and ready for release for production. There are four processes associated with asset commissioning. The first is factor acceptance testing, which identifies pre-delivery nonconformities while assets are operated as designed but not yet installed for production. The second is site acceptance testing, which proves that an asset is installed properly and interfaces with other systems and peripherals in its working environment. Commissioning protocols, the third process, that validates assets and system installation, operation, and production capability. And finally, process four, which is turnover to operations, defines the conditions that permit an asset to be released for operation. Here are the benefits associated with the processes that belong to asset commissioning. First, factory assurance testing ensures alignment between the final design specification and the actual asset capability and configuration before it's installed on site. Site acceptance testing ensures alignment between the user requirement specifications, the design, and actual assets that are received and installed on the site. Commissioning assists in the delivery of a project that provides assets that are proven to operate as intended. And defining conditions that permit an asset to be released for operations ensures that assets are prepared to provide value to the organization. Factory Acceptance Testing, or FAT, is designed to identify pre-delivery nonconformities while assets are operated as designed, but not yet installed for production. This process saves a lot of money by identifying problems while the equipment is still at the vendor facility. Any issues can be corrected quickly and relatively inexpensively compared to the cost changes after installation. The FAT processes and associated detailed test plans should be formally developed, executed, and treated as controlled documents. Detailed test plans should address all operational configurations, including safety system challenges like emergency stops, safety valve actuations, and interlock verification. Expected parameters should be clearly defined. It is a good practice to provide this information to bidders as part of the request for quote phase of the project to make sure they understand that the FAT output includes the following, which can be adjusted based on project scope and needs. Training manuals and OEM manuals, bill of material, recommended warranty spare parts, certificates of compliance, as-built technical drawings, equipment data sheets, instrument calibration certificates, and welding process qualifications. FAT provides the basis for any punch list items that should be resolved prior to formal acceptance and installation of equipment at the production site. The issue resolution process should be formally followed and controlled. If proactive tasks have been developed based on the user requirement specification or functional requirement specification, they should be vetted during FAT by end users and maintainers. If no tasks have been developed, the recommended maintenance identified by the vendor should be reviewed and simulated to ensure that it's practical. The second commissioning process is Site Acceptance Testing, or SAT. SAT is a site acceptance test. The system is tested in accordance to the client-approved test plans and specifications to show that the system is installed properly and interfaces with other systems and peripherals in its working environment. SAT ensures the asset or the system is ready to be commissioned. It checks things like a, a visual check to make sure that nothing is damaged or disconnected and all the main components are installed. The utilities are functional and are set correctly. We check functionality of the interlocks and verification of uh, how the automation works, mechanical and software. 
make sure that the safety devices work and that operator training is established and underway. Our third process is commissioning protocols. Commissioning is performed after installation and site acceptance testing. Commissioning verifies that specified equipment is installed, is functional, and is ready for validation. Many commissioning installation qualification inspections are contained in the site acceptance testing, which verifies correct equipment is installed correctly and is acceptable for commissioning. This is called integration, and it means that there's no need to do things twice. For this reason, FAT and SAT and commissioning processes need to be well-defined with specific handoffs between the events before any of them are conducted to prevent overlap. Commissioning checklists can be used for smaller and simpler projects, considering items like the correct items installed and correctly identified or labeled, item is documented in the CMMS as appropriate, and the asset is functional, including process parameters checked and calibrated. For larger or more complex projects, commissioning is generally performed in stages, beginning with installation qualification called IQ, where equipment is set in place and connected to the utilities and process lines. This work is inspected and accepted before beginning operational qualification or OQ, where the process parameters, the safety equipment and controls are verified to work correctly. Then finally, production qualification or PQ, where the system is tested under actual production conditions. Each phase validates with a different focus with the final desired outcome of a process that is fully functional for intended operations and aligned with all design specifications. Commissioning consists of detailed test plans that ensure acceptance values are achievable and sustainable. Commissioning outcomes must be documented and verified. Turnover to operations. One of the most common ways the wheels come off between getting ready to run the equipment and getting the equipment to run the way we want it to is the handoff to operations after the equipment is commissioned. It turns out that turnover to operations can mean very different things to different people. So it needs to be a well-defined process that includes a minimum review of the following. Operations and maintainers are trained and qualified on the new equipment. Complete, accurate, and properly formatted asset data is loaded to the CMMS. Operator logs and maintenance proactive tasks are developed and implemented. Proactive tasks for asset care are loaded in the CMMS. Spare parts are identified and stocked appropriately. And turnover package is assembled and controlled. Turnover to operations starts the asset's life clock. Operating hours begin at the time of turnover. Maintenance and calibration intervals start and performance tracking is initiated. This is a great time to be able to hit the ground running and not a great time to begin thinking about loading asset information into the CMMS or figuring out if parts are available for maintenance tasks that haven't been yet developed. For some period after turnover, any disruption or failure of the new equipment should be investigated for root cause. This is done in order to find any opportunities for improvement in the pre-operational processes such as FAT, if the problem could have been discovered then. Remember, the cost of change is far greater after the operational phase begins because the asset is supposed to be busy returning value on investment after it is operational, not having issues operating correctly. After turnover, Parameter adjustments, redesign, and other modifications to the equipment are regulated by change control processes that serve to update the asset management records. Let's summarize asset commissioning. FAT is designed to identify pre-delivery non-conformities while assets are operated as designed but not yet installed for production. SAT demonstrates asset function as desired in their installed working environments. Commissioning verifies the assets are functional and ready for operation, and turnover to operation starts the asset's life clock. This concludes the Asset Commissioning Process Descriptions presentation. Thank you for participating.